Today, we are tier ranking Daddy Poppy Freud's disciples. And Freud is the ultimate daddy because he had so many famous disciples and every single one of them had daddy issues because they all broke away from Freud and had all this repression and didn't ever want to acknowledge they learned a lot of what they learned from Freud, but we'll get into that in a bit. But I want to talk about you really fast. Do you give advice to your friends sometimes? I know we all do. And most of the time, they never listen. And most of the time, we should probably not be friends with those people because they just don't want to make any changes in their life. They just want to hear solutions and never do anything with that advice. But most of the time, when we're giving that beautiful advice to our friends, we are giving them recycled, informa recycled information that the, these psychoanalytical figures we are going to be talking about today invented or really brought into the public into public consciousness so let's hop into the tier ranking and if you guys are interested subscribe or like this video because on this channel we are going deep into psychoanalytical thought and all forms of knowledge so first on the list today is alfred adler and he is the most vanilla person we're going to be talking about today at some level we're um increasing from uh, most vanilla to least vanilla with our boy wilhelm reich at the end give a shout out to the orgone and sex education everybody <laughs> But Alfred Adler, in my opinion, I feel like, you know, the tier ranking maybe will because my personality being very eccentric, but we will give Mr. Adler a B, A, C. And I really enjoy Alfred Adler. I've read a lot of his works, but I feel like in, you know, and a lot of people would argue, a lot of people in the psychoanalytical movement today would argue that Adler out of all these people we're talking about today, his ideas are the most popular today. But I don't really believe in cognitive behavioral therapy or where we are at, you know, shoving drugs down people's throat and trying to reform behavior. I don't really believe where we're at today. So if that's the case with Alfred Adler, then yeah, I don't really know what his major contributions are. But I almost feel like I need to give him a B because he loved Nietzsche. He loved, he was a neo-Kantian. He brought Kant and the German idealists into his psychoanalytical work as almost almost all these people did honestly but he really tried to get into that with his inferiority and superiority complex idea and that's very commendable but one thing i don't like about adler is that he never admitted that he was one of freud's disciples he was his whole career he was always just trying to say i was a colleague of freud that i you know but he was going to these wednesday circles with otto ronk who we'll be talking about um in a little bit and many other semi-famous psychoanalytical thinkers that didn't make this list and i would say and other people have said that he really was a disciple and you can be a disciple of someone and also be a colleague or also be a teacher i have you know peers who i teach and also am taught from and i would call them a teacher and i'm also a teacher to them so him not being able to admit that in his whole career post floyd was just trying to get away from floyd and avoid a lot of the ideas of floyd and i think that held him back in a lot of ways so next on our list our only female psychoanalytical thinker today and that is Anna Freud, the daughter of Sigmund Freud. And Anna Freud actually has a lot of crazy ideas and I am tempted to give her a B. I really want to give her a B, but I'm also going to give her a C because a lot of Anna Freud's, thought, and I guess I shouldn't judge it on what happened with her ideas, but a lot of the ideas of Anna Freud got used by the Nazis, among others, for uh, very negative things. But Anna Freud really got into the idea and really championed Freud's idea, um, if you've ever read Freud's last book, Civilization and Its Discontents, Anna really brought the idea, Freud's idea, a little bit further that a lot of our problems come from the group. They actually come from society. And this isn't some neo uh, Luddite return to privatism talk I'm trying to get at here. But, you know, most of the time when we think about our trauma, really it came from the group. A lot of the trauma in our society comes from the spectacle, society, social norms. And when we want to heal or want to do things, we actually go back, and at, especially as children, this is when a lot of this happens. And as adult, we want to return to the womb. A lot of the therapy or things we try to do are through the group or through mass thinking, through political cults or through um, even group therapy. And that is a bad way. That's like saying, you know, you need to heal through the ways that you were hurt. And, you know, that's a little bit of flawed thinking. But Anna Freud saw through that. And a lot of her work outside of child psychology actually was exploring that idea. And I can give her big props for that. But in terms of contributions that are with us today, her ideas, you know, in terms of child psychology, I don't know if you guys know this, but she had these two main pupils that she uh, worked with and i think there were two twins i can't remember and they both ended up killing themselves 
and she worked and you, everyone should go read up on this her work with the Burlingham children and a lot of her work on um social excuse me social um, on children and reform psycho, psycho and um in a psychoanalytical way maybe contributed this is a big conspiracy theory in the psychoanalytical movement to the death of Anna uh, excuse me Marilyn Monroe and I actually believe this and if you guys want more information the best thing you can do right now as soon as you finish this video go watch everything else in my catalog obviously is go watch it's on YouTube for free sent the century of the self by Adam Curtis it is my favorite documentary I it will blow your mind. It will show how the teachings of Freud and Anna Freud were used by the Nazis in our society today to exploit us. And it's it's really mind-blowing. It's really good. Once again, you can even shut this off if you want to go watch that right now. But we're not done with the tier ranking yet. I'm sorry, Anna and Alfred, but you guys got C's. Next, we have someone who actually isn't necessarily one of Freud's disciples, but really could be. And I just included him on the list because I want to talk about him. Um, there's a lot of other people, like Victor Frankl, all these different other people who we could talk about who were related to Freud or had a little bit of contact with Freud. But we'll, I'll keep it short with Lacan. Lacan's going to get on, Lacan, we'll give Lacan a B. Lacan, I feel like is one of the most relevant psychoanalytical thinkers today. When you look at his work, if you've ever heard of Slavoj, Slavoj Zizek and his work, his work is, based a ton excuse me mostly on Lacan and his work with the Lacan series um if you guys don't know where to start with Lacan actually Zizek has a book called how to read Lacan and I, I would give that one a six or seven out of ten there's actually another book introductory book on Lacan that's even better than that so go check that out if you want to dive into Lacan and his ideas but his I his ideas are just a Marxist playground and for so many different things in life and I have immensely enjoyed my journey with Lacan and his ideas and how people have remixed them because actually reading Lacan straight in one of my courses at university was basically very much on Lacan. We read a lot of works of Lacan. He's a very hard writer to read and to digest. And But what people have done with Lacan is absolutely insane. And that is also true of you know the godfather of Freudian disciples. And that is our boy, Carl Jung, who's of course going to get an S because Carl Jung and his contributions are already in S. And if we look at the contributions of the Jungians, S, if what Jungianism did to art and poetry and all the stuff that have been influenced by Carl Jung, it's absolutely immense. Carl Jung, and I'm planning to start a Carl Jung course on this channel eventually. I've been meaning to do that, but you know, among with the other 20 courses I've mentioned, I want to start or are in progress on this channel now. But Carl Jung is my favorite, if not my second favorite thinker on this list because of his I, I um, dive into eccentrism, his dive into spirituality and not being afraid to take risks and move into the unconscious and the unknown and, and understanding that we are all connected. You know, a lot of these people look at Adler and all these other, you know, they didn't want, you know, you, you know, when someone reaches a certain level of connect of spirituality and a higher consciousness, when they understand the connection of all of us, especially with this idea of the collective unconscious and with the idea of the R types and how those work. I mean, that is some fire information, everybody. And you can use it to transform your life. You can use and maybe the next two thinkers than anyone, more so than anyone we've talked about so far, Jung's ideas to transform your life and to transform the world. Jung at some level is needed for us to change the world and create an end, or excuse me, end unnecessary suffering. Utopia with a capital U, which is possible, everybody, can happen with Carl Jung's teaching, I believe. So do you guys know this guy right here? So all you fans out there, you guys know who this is. I talk about him all the time on this channel. He is the most underrated thinker, underread person, I think, ever, especially in the psychoanalytical movement, but in so many other things. His ideas have been so influential, and his name is Otto Ronk. And Otto Ronk is an absolute genius, man. And we'll give him, you know, I'm a I'm a Ronky, and so we'll give him a we'll give him an S, man. I absolutely love Ronk. It's R-A-N-K, Rank Ronk. And Otto Ronk in his book, which I recommend for everybody, um, Art and the Artist, Creative Personality and Development, is really the first treatise on art, the psychoanalytical thinking on art and art as therapy and will therapy and the analysis of art. And Ernest Becker in his book, The Denial of Death, which everyone needs to go read that one too, oh my God, used Otto Ronk's ideas and took them to the next level. And that book is an absolute classic in psychoanalytical or psychological thought. And Otto Ronk, had a lot of other ideas like his book the trauma of birth very good understanding the trauma at birth and if we look at the medical system now with the uh un all the amounts of uh, the amount of unnecessary c-sections the amount of women not breastfeeding you know people taking the baby away immediately and putting it throwing it in the incubator all the trauma of a hospital birth you know uh, that that 
has an impact. And Otto Ronk makes that case. And I know if you have, once again, any idea of spirituality and coming out as a child in those first moments and the C-section manufacture um, um, factory farm that is happening to create capital in the medical system for profit, it's absolutely insane. And the effect on kids really could go, could go back to Otto Ronk and his I ideas and the trauma of birth. Of course, this is, once again, these are very simple ideas, right? That if you have a C-section and your child is in the incubator for a couple weeks and you don't breastfeed it and you're neglectful as a parent, that kid is probably not going to turn out as vet, uh, you know, that's, you're already stacking the chips against that child in terms of their development because development starts at the start. You know, as soon as we come out of the womb, uh, out of the canal, our programming, you know, even before that, we can argue even before that, but our programming really starts. And a lot of people like to deny that. And the reason people like to deny that is we want to be nice to our parents and we don't want to reflect bad on ourselves. You know, I was not breastfed. I, I wasn't a C-section baby, but you know, we all have bad things that have happened to us in terms of our parents and our, like I was circumcised. Like why the hell was I circumcised? Why was <laughs> like, what we're circumcised We're you know, all this pain, dude, all this trauma, like it's insane. And Otto Ronk really was a champion for that and trying to minimize or understand that trauma of birth and trauma of birth for the mother. And if we look at Carl Jung and his idea of the electric complex and the child being a parasite for the mother and hurting the mother and her viewing the child as that, there's so many different channels here I guess I can go into, but I'm not. Hopefully on this channel, we'll get into all that a little bit more. But I really feel like um, a couple other books, uh, Beyond Psychology by Otto Ronk, a lot of his essays, he was actually had this book in here he's actually the um what's a male mr a mr what's i'm i'm blanking um he was the affair uh, we had an affair with a niece nin who was married to henry miller the famous writer who wrote the tropic of cancer he was their therapist and then started sleeping with a niece nin who is, has a famous diary the diaries of a niece nin go check that out go check out tropic of cancer uh, by henry miller really <laughs> really crazy stuff happening with auto Ronk. he was in the scene and i guess i should talk about every single one of these people except anna freud had a hard break with um freud and Otto Ronk, more so than anybody on this list, was Freud's protege, was his star pupil. And he was Freud's secretary, literally like we maybe could call that his personal assistant today. And never even went, he never went to college. He studied at age, uh, an early age, like 18 or something, had wrote out a thesis or some ideas, sent it to Freud. Freud liked that, invited him over and uh, had a liking to him. And he studied under Freud almost exclusively and um, was really up a very talented individual. He had a lot of shortcomings, not as many shortcomings as the guy we're about to talk about right now, though. My boy, your boy too, if you don't know about him already, Wilhelm Reich. And he is the boogeyman of this list, man. And uh, you know, I'm gonna give Reich right here an A, man, because he actually had a, a lot of, you know, and you know, of course, man, I'm polyamorous, you know, I'm polyamorous. I enjoy the orgone release and the, all those ideas. And you know that I'm a biased individual here, but William Reich's book, The Mass Psychology of Fascism and the Analysis of the Nazis and Fascism through a weird org orgonic sexual lens was very great. And it has, well, I shouldn't call it great. It was pretty average, but it actually, and but when you understand it and understand the ideas, it actually opens a whole new wormhole of thinking and analysis. There's another book out there called The Male Fantasies that really is the, is the continuation of that book. It's a two volume series called Male Fantasies. When somewhere in the next decade, I'll cover it on this channel. And then um, The Origins of Totalitarianism um, and a couple other books that really actually take Wilhelm Reich's theories and like it will blow your mind at, uh, in terms of male psychology and the fascist psychology and even what's happening in our society today. I'm not even talking about any politician or political party, just politics in general and how it's related to the libido and fascism. Auto, uh, excuse me, Wilhelm Reich is the champion of, of that and Obviously, he was absolutely insane. He thought that he could manipulate weather um, with orgone energy and all these different weird things. And he had a lot of uh, sexual problems and promiscuity problems. But his books on his idea of healing through orgasms. And, you know, I always tell this to people that, you know, if you can learn to have extraterrestrial orgasms or as a man having multiple orgasms as a woman, being able to have multiple orgasms a lot easier as a woman. I mean, and I mean, at the same time in concurrent, in, in concurrent concurrence, it can change your life. And if you can learn to increase the power of your orgasm and do it for healing, not for recreation or for other things, but as a way to open yourself and heal it is one of the most powerful things ever. I mean, I 
helped me immensely. And diving into his work, he didn't, he doesn't offer necessarily any practical advice, but just the ideas and what he's working with and what he's doing is true today. And once again, a lot of people like to deny this. A lot of the repressed people out there, because a lot of people, once again, it's just like people look at their own life and like, I could never do that. I could never, you know, I have a wife and she doesn't like to do this, this or that, or a husband and he's tradition. And it's like, all right, cool. That go, go live your repressed life. But for everyone else who wants to explore and grow and experiment, his ideas are absolutely insane. If you start integrating Otto, Otto Ronk's ideas of art, Wilhelm I, I, and integrating art as therapy, and then you start integrating sex as therapy, then you start integrate, integrating Jung's idea of active imagination and the collective unconscious and archetypes, Inter you will be leagues ahead of the rest of the world. Uh, you will be the one, the 0.1% of people if you spend a couple years exploring these things in terms of personal development and consciousness, not personal development, Tony Robbins. I mean like real individuation. I mean, it's all really good. And uh, Lacan, Adler, and Fro Anna Freud really don't have that. And that's why they're really down on the list that you can change your life through Reich's sexual therapy. You can change your life through Ronk's idea of art. And you can change your life through Jung's ideas of the unconscious, active imagination, and the archetypes among many and alchemy and many other things and stories and you know Jung's a totally different rabbit hole 25 collective works a thousand pages each you know there's a lot to get to with Jung but let me know what you guys thought of my selections and if you guys would like to see me tier, me tier rank philosophy branches go check that out right over here right now peace